On this channel, you'll often see me promoting these Wagner Flexio sprayers. They're a line of HVLP sprayers from Wagner. I like them because they are cheap and they spray a really nice finish. So they're great for the DIYer. But I often get asked, uh, you know, how should we go about setting them up? What, how do we get the best spray out of them? Because they can be a little frustrating if you don't know how to use them. So I'm going to go over my five, Flexio 5000 right here. And just know that pretty much all their Flexio series, the 3500, the 2500, the 3000, the four, all, all of them are gonna be very similar in a lot of ways with just minor little differences. So what I like about the 5000 is that it comes in its own carrying case right here. And the case actually contains the turbine. This is my biggest thing with this is that the turbine isn't on the handle, which adds a lot of extra weight and can be brutal on the shoulders in a big project. So that's my number one reason that I go with the 5000 over a lot of the other series. I believe the 4000 also has it separate, but, but the 5000 has a little bit more power. Um, the 3500, 2500, I believe they have plenty of power, but again, it's big, bulky, and really if you gotta get inside any of your cabinets, that can be very difficult, and you're just gonna have a dead arm. Those are great for furniture, but for cabinets, I like the 5,000. Uh, there's not much to this part here. We open it up. Inside here, you'll see this is our air turbine, and let's get a little bit closer right here. Right here, this is the only thing you really need to know on here. You open up this guy, you'll find our air filter right here. This is where it sucks in the air. And I'm gonna take this out and clean it usually once every job. I don't feel the need to clean it out more than that, but it will get plenty, it'll get caked up and dusty and you want, you want all the airflow you can get. So you don't wanna be limiting your airflow right there. So usually at the end of every project, I'm gonna take that out, shake it out, put it right back in. And that's really all you need to know about the case. It, it holds your sprayer in your hose, which is really nice. And it comes with a whole nother gun, but that's more for decks, ceilings, everything like that. And if I'm not using it, I don't keep it in here because it's a little hard to pack everything back in. The way they do it the first time, it's almost impossible to do at the end of a job if you have both guns in here. So to get a little extra room, I just throw that on a shelf. And if I ever need it, I can take it then. Other than that, you've got your hose, connects right here, very simple. And then we've got our detachable spray tip, spray nozzle, we'll spray end, I don't know what to call it technically, but it just goes in here, clicks on, and then we've got our on off right here. So technically you turn the whole system on right here but you can control it then right here as well, which is really nice when you're spraying to just flick it off, flick it back on. Uh, whenever I have to stop and do something, I just want to turn off the air for a minute. It's really nice. Um, I really enjoyed that on here. And then on the back here, this is your airflow. Uh, if you look at the Wagner instructions, it tells you to turn it all the way down and just turn it up slightly as you're going. I'm going to tell you though that literally you will always always have it cranked up the entire way. Unless you're spraying like uh, stain. Stain has such a low viscosity that you're not gonna need your air all the way up. But any paint, all the way up. Even your thinned out enamel top coats, all the way up. More air is going to be more atomization. So we want this to be atomized as best as possible. So air all the way up. Like, there's just almost no circumstances where you're gonna turn that down unless you're spraying on a stain. Uh, next, we have this little black knob right here. We can see that right here behind the trigger. And that's gonna control how much uh, paint comes out, the fluid that comes out of your tip. So those are the two things that combine for your atomization. The more fluid that's coming out, you need more air to atomize it. So if you twist it to the left, you're gonna get less fluid coming out and you're gonna get a smaller spray fan, but it's gonna be nice and atomized. It can give you a little bit difficult going really slow on a big kitchen cabinet like this. So I like to get it nice and atomized. I'll start with it 
twisted very far back, very little paint coming out. Then I'm going to creep it forward, creep it forward, creep it forward so I can get the biggest spray fan I can that still looks nice and atomized. If you go too far, and let's say you get this thing dialed all the way in and you get a nice big spray fan, you're going to lose a lot of your atomization. There's going to be too much paint for the amount of air that this machine can produce. So you're going to get uh, a lot bigger sprays of splatter, paint, stuff like that. And it's just not going to lay as nice or look as nice. When you go to a more expensive HVLP sprayer, that's one of the things you can get. Like on my, uh, on my Titan 115, I can get a really wide spray fan that's really nice and atomized. So I can blast through a kitchen like this in probably half the time when I'm spraying. It's really nice for especially big kitchens or when you're into more production style painting. Those are the main things you need to know to get this thing set up. But there's a few other things you need to know along the way here. So the way an HVLP works is the air coming through here, a little bit of air gets siphoned off and sent down this little tube right here. And what that does, it'll blow air into the cup and pressurize the cup, which then sends paint up this, uh, up this tube right here. So that's an area that a lot of people run into issues when it's not spraying correctly. Uh, an issue is oftentimes this guy right here, paint might go up and get, if you tilt your gun to this side that this tube is on, can we see that? Let's say you're spraying and you tilt this way and paint hits this right here and gets, uh, gets all messy in here and suddenly this gets clogged up. You may not notice it right away, but you come back day number two if you didn't clean your gun out good and you're not, not getting good spray fan. Nothing's working right. Maybe no paint's even coming out. You gotta pull this hose off and one sign right away is, is there paint inside the hose? That means paint went up and this got clogged. So this is a one-way valve right here. And this is your most common culprit you're gonna run into if you're having issues spraying. There's a little, um, got almost blow it out. There's a little one-way valve piece of plastic here. We can see that. And that sits right in here and it's supposed to keep the paint from coming up into the gun and mixing with the air and causing a big hot mess inside your gun. Um, and it works very well. But what you're gonna run into is if you get even just a little bit of paint in there, the next day, if you didn't clean it out, this thing is gonna be glued shut and no air is gonna come down into the cup and pressurize the cup and help that paint come back out. Hope I'm explaining this good. So always open this up, clean it out. Don't lose that little piece in there and make sure that's clean. Um, when my gun's not spraying right, I usually get all frustrated. I get mad, spend five minutes on it and I go, oh, the one way valve. And then I check it and that's usually the culprit. Right, so you put this back on, make sure that gets clean. And if you got that little blue piece in there, you shouldn't be seeing paint get in here. But if you do see paint get in there, that means your blue piece is missing or it's not, it's out of whack in there. That little, little tiny piece of plastic in there. Um, so the next thing I want to know on here is our siphon tube. This thing, you see how it's at an angle here and you gotta think about which way you're spraying most. On your, on your more expensive sprayers, they'll have a knob on the side that allows you to twist this. So if I'm spraying up, I can twist it so it's siphoning paint from the bottom of the cup. And I'll twist it this way if I'm spraying down. But this gun does not allow you to do that. And you're not gonna wanna take it apart and get your fingers all dirty and twist it around a lot. So I always pay attention to which way that's facing. And I try to have it I, I'm gonna spray down more often than I'm spraying up. In a kitchen like this, I'll, I'll spray up and hit the uh, crown molding and stuff, but if my cup is full enough, it shouldn't matter. So if I've got my cup of paint full up to here, it shouldn't matter if I'm pointing up or down. Sometimes I'll just point it sideways and try to keep it in the middle. But pay attention if you start getting um, splatters, stop in the paint, stuff like that. It, you might still have paint in here, but it, 
if you're tilted too far, it might be trying to siphon from the top corner like that. Another thing when you're cleaning, um, this thing, this uh, siphon and the ring on here, they're, they're one piece. In your more expensive guns, those are two separate pieces, will get stuck. A little bit of paint will get up around this ring up here. And if you clean your gun, but you don't take this siphon tube out, what can happen is you get a little ring of paint here that almost seals this into place. And then the air being siphoned off will hit this. And again, it won't pressurize your cup. So make sure you take that out, clean both sides, clean the top of this. Most problems when you're spraying happen the day after you're spraying, the next day or something, when you didn't clean your gun properly. So if you clean your siphon tube, you clean this ring, um, you clean this little air one-way valve here, you should be good to go the next day. You gotta keep those clean. So let's put that back on. Oh, another thing I really like about these guns is there's a little release right here to take this off and it's just plastic. This is the only thing I take out of the job site to clean. I'll bring it down to the laundry tub. Sometimes if I can't clean it out at the job I'm in, I'll literally, literally wrap this in plastic and bring it home with me and just clean it out my sink. This is the only thing I need to bring home, this, this, this part here. Well, I've got it off, let's keep going here. The next is we've got the spray tip and let's take a closer look at that. Again, I'll take all these things apart when I'm cleaning and just clean up everything really good, put them all in the cup when I'm done and bring it all back the next day like that. So your paint's gonna come out the center of that tip right here from this guy and your air is gonna hit it on both sides. And a good way to think of it is the air from this tip, if you can see that, is spraying at it from this way and this way, hitting that paint in the middle and creating a fan that goes um, perpendicular to the way this is facing. So you see how this is going that way. Again, look at that. That means my spray fan is up and down. If I tilt this, that means my spray fan is now horizontal instead of vertical. So if this is, if that's vertical, that means my spray fan is horizontal. Twist it and the opposite is true. So here's another big thing while you're spraying with these guys is the turbine will get warm and it'll be blowing out warm air while you're spraying. This is gonna be more true on your primer, but it happens on the top coat as well. That warm air hitting the spray tip right here where the paint's coming out, you'll start to get a buildup of paint that's drying right here. And you might get one of these little air holes clogged up with paint. It'll start shooting paint to one side or the other, or you'll get a little buildup of paint around here. And your spray fan will start to get bad. The paint won't come out right. You'll start to see things going wrong. When I'm in the middle of spraying and it was spraying good, that's usually the culprit. So if you watch my videos sometimes, you might see me just out of nowhere, stop and kind of dig in here. I'll just be spraying, stop, flick, and the air will keep running while I'm doing that. So if I sit here, it'll the little pieces I'll scratch off will then just fly off and we're good to go. So if I'm spraying and the spray fan changes, culprit number one. If I'm spraying and I start to get splatters or something like that, my siphon tube is probably catching air. If it's neither of those, I'm gonna check my hose right here and see if any paint has gotten in. Typically, that's not a problem while you're spraying because even if paint gets in there, it's wet, it's not gonna cause a problem right away. But if it has time to dry, that's where you're gonna run into problems. All right, so those are the problems you're gonna run into while you're spraying. If you're running into problems when you're setting up to spray and your sprayer is perfectly clean, it's typically going to be the viscosity of your paint isn't low enough. You need thinner paint to get atomized properly, or you need to turn your air up and dial back how much fluid's coming out. So thin paint, low amount of fluid, high amount of air equals really good atomization. So if you start there and then slowly add a little bit more paint at a time, and you should be good to go. Well, I think that's about it for the Wagner Flexio 5000. Again, at 
roughly $200. This is a, a great sprayer for spraying your kitchen cabinets. And if you have any more questions about this or any sprayers like this, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I will try to check back and answer them as often as I can. Here you see me just uh, measuring out 64 ounces of Benjamin Moore Advance and putting in my 12 and a half ounces of water in there to thin it down to that 20%. Then I'm just gonna stir that up, get it ready for spraying and pour it into my Flexio 5000 cup. Next, you see me all suited up in my Tyvek suit. I'm gonna dial in my spray fan. I got it right away. Everything's looking really good and I am ready to spray here. When I'm spraying, you'll see that Keegan, my son, just he knows what to do on these jobs. He's been on so many. He knows that his job is to bring me doors and keep feeding me doors. He takes the one I sprayed away, puts it on a table out in the garage where it's drying and feeds me another door so that I can just keep spraying the entire time here. He's been actually coming out to jobs with me since he was about 12 years old. So he's been on a lot of cabinet jobs over the years. When I start spraying all the boxes, Keegan knows that that is his 15 to 20 minute break time every day. He loves this part. He goes outside, gets to sit in the yard, open up his phone, see what he's missed. And uh, he always says he gets really tired after that part and he has a hard time getting back to work and he'd prefer to skip it, but I have a hard time believing that. So as soon as I'm done spraying the boxes, the back sides of the cabinets, we have the garage heated up really good. They've had enough time to dry, so Keegan starts bringing them in, and I start spraying the front sides of the drawers right here. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something about your HVLP sprayer today or just got a little bit more confident to tackle a project like this on your own. If you have any questions about your project or about your sprayer, go ahead and leave them in the comments below, and I will check back and answer them as often as I can. Thanks again. Bye.